As a freelancer, one of the most important decisions that you're going to make early on is how much are you going to charge for your services? In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys not only some different ways that you can charge for your services, but also some of the best ways that you can display your prices to your customers on your website. In the last video, I talked about not putting your prices on the landing page of your website. You can go back and watch that video if you want to know why that's my opinion. But if you're still thinking, I'm not sure I want to have my prices on my website for everyone to see, don't worry, I suggest that if you're in that category, you can make that page a hidden page from your website and people will only be able to find those prices if you send them there or if they're clicking a link and it's time for them to see the prices finally. That was just a side note. I'll show you how to do that in the tutorial, but first I want to acknowledge today's sponsor, which is Wix. Thank you to Wix for sponsoring my freelance business startup series. Wix is the platform that I recommend for making your business website. All my business websites are hosted on Wix and they have excellent tools for helping you communicate your price and your services and pretty much anything about your business on your website for your customers to see. So before I show you guys how to set up your pricing on your website, I'm just going to briefly go over the different ways that I suggest charging for your services as a freelancer. One of the most common ways of charging is charging by your time. You can come up with an hourly rate or daily rate, and that rate is going to depend a lot on your experience level and the type of service that you're providing. But a couple things I want to say about charging by time is that A, it doesn't really reward you if you become better at what you're doing and thus more efficient, you'll end up making less money the faster you get your work done. And B, it's not always clear to the customers what they are going to get for the amount of time that they're paying you for. And it's a little unclear how much time might be required of you. So I'm gonna get into a solution for that in a moment. But if you do decide to charge solely based on time, try to communicate to the client what they're gonna be getting included with that much time or how much time is going to be required for you to get the work that they need done. The second way that you can charge as a freelancer is is per project and this is the method that I use because you are rewarded if you're able to get your work done faster and it also doesn't make things as murky if you already know that you're going to be outsourcing your work to other people so for example if someone hires me for graphic design but I pay someone else to do the graphic design I don't want to have to report to them that I worked 10 hours on it if someone else worked 10 hours for it it kind of just doesn't feel right to me so instead I just charge a flat rate that the client and I both agree is fair and then I can take a percentage of that money and pay the person that I might outsource the work to. One thing about charging per project is you have to be really clear about what that project entails as well. You don't want to get into a situation where the customer is expecting unlimited revisions and notes and updates and changes because some people actually do expect that. So be sure to outline how many visions are included and what those revisions can entail and that will eliminate any confusion in the future. The last way that you can charge as a freelancer is kind of a combination between charging for your time and charging per project project. This is by creating a package and the package might involve how much time you dedicate to some tasks and what deliverables are included as a result. So for example, if you are a wedding photographer, your package might include 12 hours of photography that day over their wedding day, as well as 10 edited photos and an edited photo album or something like that. So that includes their time and the project deliverables. And then you come up with one package rate that applies to different situations that you think will be common. So now I'm going to show you guys how to implement any of these pricing models on your website so that you can communicate this to your customers. Let's get into it. So first go to Wix using the link that's in the description below and I will log into my account. If you don't have a Wix site yet, that's okay. Just click create new site click business or any category you want, and then click edit template when you find a design that you like. But I'm going to edit my existing sample business website and just add a pricing page to that site. So to add a pricing page to your website, we're going to use a very intuitive tool that I love called Wix pricing plans. And this is a feature that I love that Wix designed to make your pricing page look very modern and professional and your customers will quickly be able to read your prices and what each option includes. And then when they're ready to buy from you, they can even click the link right there on the page to purchase one of your services. All you have to do is get set up with a payment platform and then you can do the whole exchange right there on your website. So to set up Wix pricing plans, click here to see the Wix app market, then search the term pricing and you will see Wix pricing plans pop up as an option. So then click on it and click add to site and it will go ahead and install on your site and add all the necessary pages to your website. So now let's go into manage pages and rename this page as pricing just to keep it simple. 
And if you click that dot, dot, dot icon, you'll see some options appear. And here's where you have the option to hide the page from your main menu if you don't want your pricing page to appear in your main menu for whatever reason. All you have to do is click hide. And so if you want this page to be private and you want to be able to send someone a direct link to this page or direct someone to it, then you can click SEO and click this link right here and that will be the exact URL to your pricing page, which is hidden from your menu. Now for the fun part, let's edit the pricing plans. So remember you can choose to charge hourly per project or make a kind of combination package, whatever you'd like. So let's just go through this process together of customizing a pricing plan page so that you can get an idea of how yours might look and function. Okay, so to edit your pricing plan options, just click the button that says manage plans. And on your website, there was a sample plan there, but that was just a sample. So in order to get any plans on your website, you're gonna have to push create plan. So the first thing you're gonna do is give your plan a name. So you can choose, like here they give the example silver membership. Um, you can also call it basic or, so let's just call it silver as the example here. And let's say we're gonna be charging hourly. So let's say as graphic designer, I wanna charge hourly for a logo design. So maybe the silver membership includes, um, you know, 10 hours of design consultation. And then the hourly rate will be at the bottom for the 10 hours. I'm just gonna write in some sample things that might be included in a plan. So let's specify 10 hours here, and this package includes an initial consultation, branding design, logo design, one revision. This is just an example. And then for the price, um, you can either make it free, which is not what you're doing for pricing. You can charge one time, or you can even charge recurring. So if you wanted to have this on a monthly, weekly, or yearly basis, you can do it like that. But for this one, we're just gonna do one-time payment because it's a 10-hour package. So let's say that for the 10 hours, I'm charging 20 euros an hour. Let's make it 200 euros, this package. And this plan will be good for until canceled. So that is an example of what it would look like. Here you can also upload your plan policies, like you can create a document with all the terms and conditions for the plan and upload it here so that everything is crystal clear and the customer knows exactly what they're buying. And that's something that you would upload if you want it there. So let's go ahead and save this and then we can see what it looks like on the website. So here you can also remove this title that says choose your pricing plan. You can put nothing there or you can put, you know, my current rates or something like that. It doesn't have to say choose your pricing plan, especially if there's only one pricing plan. So here is what the package looks like. And if somebody clicks, let's go in preview mode. And so if someone actually clicks on this button, they can actually pay you for your services right here through Wix seamlessly. All you have to do is get your payment platform set up and you can receive your payments all through your website, which is really cool and really simple. And so if you do this process again and again, then obviously you can have multiple payment plans. Something to know about this interface is that it will arrange the plans in groups of three. So right now we only have one here, but if we were gonna have two, there'd be two side by side and then three side by side. But if there were four, there would be three in one row and then one in the bottom row. And so four payment plans doesn't really look as aesthetically pleasing or symmetrical. So it would be good to do them in groups of three if you're gonna do more than three plans. If you're doing one, two or three, it doesn't matter. But if you're gonna do three or four, then you might as well do six, if that makes sense. But you shouldn't have too many because you don't wanna overwhelm your customers. And if you wanna change the way that the pricing plans are designed, what it looks like, then you just have to click on the pricing plans, click settings, and then in the design area, you'll be able to change the colors, the fonts, and even the shape of the buttons if you want. So you can play around with that and get a design that fits your branding. And of course, don't forget to save your work and publish whenever you're ready to go live. All right, well, that's all you need to do for setting up the pricing on your website. It's very clear, understandable, and all the terms are laid out for the customer, so there shouldn't be too many questions about what's included or how much it's gonna cost. 
Clarity saves you a lot of time, so definitely invest in making everything as clear as possible. If you found this tutorial helpful, then please give this video a like and hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this about business, design, or creative projects. I've included a resource down below in the description to help you brainstorm what pricing model you want to use for your business. And also down below, you will see this link, which you can click to start building your website today, getting your prices all set up so you can be one step closer to getting those clients and starting your freelance business. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.